What's up guys, it's Smuck and today I'm gonna make a Holy Paladin guide for Mythic Plus. I'm gonna go through the talents, the stats, Azerite traits, trinkets, consumables, healing rotation and damage rotation. So let's just head into it. Okay, so first up we have uh, the talents here and the talents I go with is Crusader's Might, Rule of Law, Repentance or Blinding Light, Devotion Aura, Holy Avenger, Sanctified Wrath and Beacon of Virtue. So there's a few things you can change but this is uh, my recommended um, talent setup at least but if you feel like you, you want to heal more and um, if you don't feel comfortable by going with crusader's might you could go with best of faith but this is going to reduce your uh, your damage output a lot so it's not recommended but if like you're new to mythic plus it, it is an option for for like um, getting into it and, and to to heal a little bit more uh, but mainly you want to go with Crusader's Might because this is going to um, reduce the cooldown of your uh, Holy Shock and Light of Dawn by one and a half second every time you use it. And for a Holy Paladin, a Holy Shock is pretty much everything. Um, so definitely go with this one. Second, uh, go with Rule of Law because um, this is going to increase the range of your mastery, which is um, basically it's an HPS increase because you're not like always on top of the person that you want to heal so this is what i recommend you could go with unbreakable spirit but uh, i would not recommend it you don't really need to uh, reduce cooldown on your bubble and lay on hands and so on so um next up repentance it it has been changed now you're actually gonna get in combat with um with mobs that uh, your repentance if you walk close enough to them so be careful with this one um you could take it if you have like a mage in your group or a rogue so that they can go first um, to the mob and get in combat and then the rest of the team can walk past and then the mage rogue can vanish and you will not be in combat anymore. Otherwise you could go with blinding light which is also very good because uh, it's like a short AOE interrupt so that one can be quite good as well. Um, it depends a little bit on the dungeon which you use. Fist of Justice, you, you don't really use this a lot. Uh, next up, Devotion Aura. This has been nerfed a little bit here in uh, BFA, but it, it's still the strongest for Mythic Plus at least. Um, this is going to reduce the damage taken by 10%, depending on how many is actually inside your aura. So this will split up. So let's say one guy is uh, like 10 yards uh, or within 10 yards to you, then it's going to split up. So you get 5% damage reduction uh, each. And if your whole group of five is there, it's going to go down to 3% because 3% is now the lowest amount of um, like that devotion hour can go down to. Um, back in Legion, it was 20% uh, as max, but now it, it has been nerfed down to 10%. But when you pop our mastery, everyone in your party will have a full 20% damage reduction, which makes this uh, the best aura for Mythic Plus at least, because damage reduction is really, really good in Mythic Plus. And next up, we have Holy Avenger. And this is like, um, you could call it a, a mini bloodlust. Um, this one increases your haste and your Holy Shock healing is going to be increased by 30% for 20 seconds. This is very, very strong because as I said, Holy Shock is pretty much everything. The two other um, options here is not really viable in Mythic Plus, I would say. So definitely go with this one. It's really, really good. And it's a short cooldown. It's when one and a half minute. That's pretty short. And for the next one, go with Sanctified Wrath. This is going to increase um, the duration of your wings by uh, five seconds. And also it reduces the cooldown of your Holy Shock by 50%. And this is uh, very, very strong. And as I said, Holy Shock is everything. Um, I have a video already um, about which wings you want to go with and um, it is Sanctified Ref but I'm going to put a link in the description if you want to see why it's Sanctified Ref. It, there's a lot more details in that video. For beacons you want to go with Beacon of Vir Virtue mainly. I don't know, maybe when you get higher item level there might be a reason to go with Beacon of Faith in certain dungeons but this has been nerfed as well. So now when you put Beacon on two targets they're only going to get 10% um, of the actual uh, heal that you do. So if you heal like a third party member without a beacon, the two people with the beacons will get 10% um, of this healing that you heal the third person. Beacon of Virtue is still the same as in Legion and uh, all affected allies will be healed by 40% uh, of the amount that you heal. 
Um, so definitely go with Virtue at the moment. That's what I feel is the strongest. So let's head over to uh, the stats. The first stat you want to go for is definitely crit. You can no longer get crit capped in BFA um, because Holy Shock has now been changed so that you only get 30% extra crit chance with Holy Shock. Uh, in Legion, this was just double up uh, of the crit that you had, so you only had to get to 50% crit. But now, in reality, you would have uh, to get 70% crit in order to uh, be 100% sure to proc Infusion of Light. Um, but th this is not going to happen. So, try and stack as much crit as you can. And when you have done that, the second stat is a little bit a matter of pre uh, personal preferences. Because you could go with mastery, which is going to increase your healing for sure. But versatility will increase your healing and damage. Haste will probably mostly benefit um, from the extra damage you will be able to do with the extra haste. So I would say um, definitely in the, in the beginning try to aim for crit, mastery and then versatility. And just short for those who might not know, what your mastery does as a holy paladin is just that uh, you heal more the closer you are to the target. Um, let's now head over to the s right traits. As a set, as a paladin, you can never really get en enough crit. So what you want is to stack as much crit as you can here in your s right traits. So the first trait in the outer ring you want to go for is called Blightborne Infusion. This is going to proc you 960 crit, which is very, very huge. You can stack these, so if you, for example, have three pieces of those, you could have uh, nearly 3000 crit proc from this proc only. This buff, however, is a little bit hard to get, so if you cannot get this one, I would recommend that you go with Swirling Sands. It does pretty much the same thing, except for that it procs a little bit less crit for a little bit smaller duration of time. It's 12 seconds, but your critical effects extend Swirling Sands buff by one second, up to a maximum duration of 18 seconds. And to be honest, I kind of like to have two different traits that will proc crit, because then it means that not necessarily all the crit is going to come at once, but it would kind of extend, like, for example, if I get a uh, Blightborn Infusion proc, which, which is going to give me 960 crit, then maybe when the duration is about to run out, I'm going to go into Swirling Sands, so, so my crit will still be kind of high all the time, but again, this is completely RNG. You could get all the buffs as one at once, and you might go up to 80 or 90% crit, uh, depending on the S-Rite um, uh, item level that you have. And then maybe you're left with none for a certain amount of time. But I have tried to uh, to actually have like uh, these traits to refresh, so whenever they're about to run out, they instantly proc again. So it's completely RNG. Last but not least, if you cannot get Blightborn Infusion or Swirling Sands, try and go with Secrets of the Deep. This one is going to drop orbs around you that you have to go and pick up, and it's going to boost your primary stat by a certain amount, depending on your s item level. And sometimes it drops like a, a rare orb, and this one is going to boost your primary stat by a lot more than usual. So this is a good third option at least. So for the middle ring, you want to aim for Elemental Royal. This is a proc that can increase any of your secondary stat for 10 seconds. So there is a fun thing about this trade right here. I do not know if this is a bug or it's actually intended. But I tried to get a proc of this uh, with crit. And then shortly after, it also proc haste. And I only had one of these traits. As I said, I do not know if this is a bug or if it's actually intended. If you cannot get Elemental Royal, try and aim for Woundbinder. What this does is that your healing effects has a chance to increase your haste up to a certain amount for 6 seconds. Uh, even though haste is not what you want to aim for, it's not too bad of a stat, especially not in Mythic Plus. So heading into the inner ring, normally these traits are not really that good, uh, but there is a few that is pretty decent to be honest. First is Resounding Protection. This one is going to give you an Absorb Shield every 30 seconds, and these traits stacks as well, so if you have 3 of those, you're gonna have a pretty big absorb shield to be honest. If you cannot get resounding protection, try and aim for vampiric speed. What this does is that whenever you have harmed an enemy and it dies, you're gonna heal yourself for a certain amount and you're gonna get some speed as well. So this trade would for example be good in some dungeons where there's non-elites and elites in the same pack or whenever there's a pack where the health difference is pretty, pretty huge. Uh, because then midway through the pack, you would heal yourself for a pretty big amount uh, because of this trade. So this leads us to the trinkets. And for the trinkets, go for even more crit. So what I have right here is Kong of Dark Whispers. This drops from uh, Shrine of the Storm. 
and it has a chance to proc you a certain amount of crit for 15 seconds. If you cannot get this one, try and get this one which drops from a world boss, uh, Drust Ruined Icicle. Um, this has a chance to proc you 1400 intellect for 12 seconds, which is pretty huge as well. And I would either take one of these two trinkets and then combine it with uh, Tsane's Bark Spines. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but this one is a huge trinket uh, with one and a half minute cooldown, which will give you a lot of crit for 10 seconds. Uh, so either one of these tr these trinkets with this one, um, because we need we need a lot of crit as a holy weapon. I think to be honest, if you take this one together with Kong of Dark Whispers. And you use this one, and this one is proccing, and all your s right pieces are proccing at the same time. I think you can nearly reach 100% crit, which is probably, like, it's probably enough. So heading over to the food here. So the first thing you want to get is Sugar Crusted Fish Feast, or at least someone in your party should get this. What this does is that whenever you put down a feast and you're going to eat at it, it's going to regenerate 10% health and mana every single second for 10 seconds. And instantly, when you start eating at this feast, you're gonna get a versatility buff that gives you 45 versatility. So if you do not have the gold for this uh, fish feast, you could buy honey glazed horn juice, but this is just regenerating uh, health and mana at the normal speed of any 120 food that you could get. Um, and this is gonna leave you with a crit buff after 10 seconds, which is 55 critical strike for one hour. But keep in mind, in Mythic Plus, everything is about time, so definitely try and get the fish feast if you can. And since we're playing healer, you definitely want to stack intellect, so go with the Flask of Endless Phantoms. Try and stack this one up with War Scroll of Intellect. What this does is that uh, you apply the scroll to anyone in your party, and the whole party is going to get 7% increased intellect for 30 minutes. This also stacks with other scrolls, so you can stack stamina, attack power, and so on. And while we're at it, why not stack it up with uh, Battle Scarred Augment Rune? So this is a new rune in uh, BFA, it does the same as, uh, as the one in Legion, but uh, you, you have to buy these each for their own in um, like at the auction house, so you can get them from missions or, or questing or whatsoever. And then we have our potion with one minute cooldown. Um, this is instead of prolonged power in Legion, so now we use this, which gave us 900 intellect for 25 seconds. This is really huge. So if you're suddenly in need of mana in combat, you could take custom mana potion. This is instantly gonna restore you 11,000 mana and it has a 1 minute cooldown and it's gonna share a cooldown with other potions as well. The second option is Potion of Replenishment. This is a channel drink, so whenever you press this one, you're gonna channel drinking this one for 10 seconds and it's gonna give you up to 25,000 mana. However, you can stop it if like halfway through you realize uh, there's coming some big damage here that you need to outheal and then you're just not gonna get all the mana from this potion. And since we're talking about Mythic Plus, we like to speed things up a little bit because everything is about time. So what you can do is to use a Lightful Potion, which increases your movement speed by 150%, lasts for 8 seconds, and this shares cooldowns with your other potion, you need to keep that in mind. Um, or you could use the, use the old Skystar Potion, which does the uh, exact same thing, but that was just like a Legion Potion. It still works in BFA, so it's just like, uh, it, it doesn't really matter what which one you take. Last but not least, we have the Invis Potions. Um, so in BFA here, we got Demetrius Draught of Deception, and uh, you have the old one from Legion called Skackle Drink. Doesn't matter which one you use, it's just uh, like new stuff, old stuff, doesn't matter. Um, you want to keep in mind, these shares cooldown with your other potions as well, so if you use this one, you won't be able to use like an um, uh, Inslake Potion or... Um, Sky step or, or anything like that for 10 minutes. So use them carefully. Okay, so let's head over to the healing rotation. The healing rotation is kind of hard to tell because there's no specific uh, rotation. It kind of depends a little bit on the situation that you're in. But there's um, kind of a rule, I guess you could say. Always use your holy shock whenever it's available. If you don't use it for healing, try and use it for damage. Um, and also, Whenever you pop your CDs, try not to pop like all at once because that, that's kind of overkill. Um, it can be fun to try and see how much heal you can pop out and sometimes it might be a must actually. But normally you don't really want to pop all your CDs at once. Also, whenever you pop Beacon of Virtue, if your whole group is stacked, try and use um, 
Light of Dawn into the group, but only if like most of the people in the group are stacked, because then you're gonna get the most out of this uh, Beacon of Virtue. Another smart little trick you can do is that um, whenever you cast Flash of Light, then spam Beacon of Virtue while you cast this, because then exactly at the moment that you finish your cast of Flash of Light, it's actually getting transferred into those beacons, so you, you're actually gonna get one more global cooldown into your Beacon of Virtues, which is really, really good. And then there's a big question about, um, do you use Flash of Light or do you use Holy Light in your Infusion of Light proc? And the answer to that is mostly Flash of Light, unless you know that this is going to be a mana heavy fight so that you need to save up mana um, then you should use holy light but normally just go ahead and use your flash of light but yeah that that was pretty much the healing part of it um about rule of law you can use that whenever you really want to because the cooldown is so low um but try, try and use it whenever you heal someone who is not like exactly right in your face um there is a lot more to go through here, healing wise I would say, it's more like defensive, um, like whenever, when do you want to pop your bubble, when do you want to give sacrifice and pop up or aura mastery and stuff like that, but talents have so much utility and it really depends on the situation and it also depends like whenever your DPS has their own CDs ready, like their own defensive CDs ready and as well as a tank. Um, there is some nice utility that balance have that you could use to, to actually do some fancy stuff. Like, for example, Freedom can dispel certain magics, actually. Uh, I'm gonna show you a clip here. So, most spells that slows you down, you can actually pop Freedom and it, it will actually dispel the whole magic. Um, so in this case, it's in Shrine, the first boss, a uh, magic called Choking Brian. And the healer does not have enough dispels to dispel the whole party, so I could use my freedom here. I'm, I'm playing as protection, but it, it doesn't really matter. Like, any spec freedom is the same. Um, but, like, defensive-wise and stuff, I'm not going to go through all that um, in this video. Because it really is a matter of uh, communica communication in your group. And uh, it, it might be up for another video. Okay, so heading to the last part here. This is going to be the damage rotation. And first off here, I'm going to show a clip where I don't use any CDs at all. There's no flask, no pots, no lust. None of my cooldowns, like no, no wings, no nothing. Uh, and up in the top left here, you can see um, what I do. And it's pretty simple for a Paladin. Like, you have Judgment, Crusader Strike, Holy Shock, and Consecration. That's the spells that you're gonna use. So, without any CDs, it's um, kind of slow and there's not much happening. And pretty much, you're just using your, your CDs whenever. Um, try and always, when you pop your Judgment, Try and use Holy Shock afterwards, because the next spell, after you cast your Judgment, is going to do 30% more damage. And basically, you just pop your Consecration when everything else is on CD or in between your Holy Shocks. Okay, so now let's try with the CDs. So this is only going to be with Wings and the Holy Avenger. Um, we're not going to use any Lust or Flask or Potions or anything like that. So the thing you can do while you pop your Wings and Holy Avenger is to um, do... Judgment, Holy Shock, Crusader Strike, Holy Shock, Crusader Strike, Holy Shock, and then when you don't when you don't have anything to use, pop your Consecration, and then you just go back into um, to Holy Shock, into to Crusader Strike, into Holy Shock, and so on. Use your Judgment always when you can, and followed by a Holy Shock if possible. And there's one more thing that is whenever you run into a trash pack, make sure you pop your Consecration as early as possible in order to help with some AoE DPS. And that is pretty much it for this Holy Paladin Guide. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, consider liking and maybe subscribing. And if not, it's completely fine. See you next time.